Hi guys, this is Zoe, also known as Green Mom Zoe on YouTube or Ripple Maker Zoe on Twitter. For those that have been following me and reading my blogs, I want to say thank you very much for all of your support. Uh, you guys are great. Um, also, I want to let you know that I just started making my own videos and I will be posting them on my new YouTube channel, uh, Green Mom Zoe. So feel free to subscribe and stay up to date all, on all of the video releases. Today I will be doing a video review of the documentary Food Inc. And you probably have heard of it already because it just came out uh, this past summer in theaters across the country. But uh, I waited until it came out on DVD on Netflix. So I think I was the first one that rented it yesterday and watched it for the first time. It was a remarkable, very well done, well researched, very well presented documentary. I would say it was one of the best documentaries I've seen in recent times. Is you have to see Food Inc. ASAP. And I stress the urgency because I believe that once you see and hear the facts, uh, it will alter your perception of food forever. The movie covers just about every aspect of the food industry, from meat to dairy to grains to fruits and vegetables. Um, it is directed by award-winning director Robert Keener, um, who took about six years just to complete the project and put this movie on the market. Um, it is co-produced by um, a very well-known uh, investigative journalist and author of uh, Fast Food Nation, Eric Schlosser. So for those of you that have read Fast Food Nation, you probably will be familiar with his views in the movie too. I love the way the movie begins with the opening dialogue saying that the food industry doesn't want you to know the truth about food because if you did, you might not want to eat it ever again. So um, that's important for you to think about as you're watching the movie because there will be many truths that will be revealed one after the other. The truth is that the meat that you eat is uh, not producing those cute farms that are usually on the packaging. Um, it is produced in mass slaughtering houses uh, where animals and employees alike are treated like temporary objects. I mean, chickens are grown in less than 48 days. And the reason that is possible is because they're injected with synthetic growth hormones. Um, also, the meat from the cows and the pigs um, sometimes contains E. coli bacteria which is very dangerous to the human, uh, but the way that the um, meatpacking industry deals with that is they have invented this machine that washes the meat with ammonia-based substance that the meat is washed through to kill the bacteria and then it's packaged nicely and it's served on your supermarket shelves. This is the meat that you're probably using for your barbecue or for your uh, Thanksgiving dinner or for whatever else um, uh, you're using it. Here is another shocking truth for you. Um, mass slaughtering houses such as Smithville, for example, uh, which is known to contribute um, most of its supply to the fast food industry, um, they hire specifically illegal immigrants because they consider this as a cheap and easily replaced labor. Um, the way they see it is that people who don't have legal papers are not going to complain and speak out loud about the injustices that occur in the slaughterhouses. Um, and the funny thing is that um, when the United States Immigration Services come to get those illegal workers who have been working for the company for like years um, packing your meat, uh, they get the guys that work on the floor, but they never go after the managers that hire them or after the corporations that hire them. And that is very fascinating to me because right now everybody's talking about illegal immigration and uh, illegal immigration is occurring all the time, uh, but the right people are not being uh, prosecuted. And in this case is the food company such as Smithville. The other truth the movie reveals is that 90% of the soybeans in the world are genetically modified by a company called Monsanto. Now, if you never heard of Monsanto, I encourage you to go to Google and search them and find out who they are. Uh, because they're like the major player um, who produces pesticides for grains, especially uh, they're known for producing this um, genetically modified soybean that um, resists the pesticides. Um, so what Monsanto does, the movie reveals, is that uh, they prosecute all farmers who do not use their seed. 
so if a farmer, for example, wants to keep their seed, uh, they go after him, they put him on a black list, and they take him to court, and after so much money and legal fees, most of those farmers simply settle their lawsuits because they do not have the power and the funding to fight Monsanto. Um, as one of the farmers put it, it's just not worth it because the way the system works right now is that those who have the most cash on the scale are the ones that prevail in court. So um, it's really grim news when it comes to the soybean industry. And if you think that the FDA and the USDA are there to protect the consumer rights, I would encourage you to think again because most of the people who have been chosen to lead those organizations usually came from the very organizations they're supposed to be inspecting and prosecuting such as you know Smithfield or Kraft or uh, Monsanto they used to like work for these corporations and all of a sudden they come on the board of directors of FDA or USDA um, how would you think about that as you know um, fair and justice system um, because I don't I mean to me this sounds like they're all in the same bed together and uh, whatever the food industry wants the government simply provides because they're just one and the same had enough truth already don't get depressed because there's ways that the system can be changed and uh, Stony Field CEO and founder Gary Hilschreit uh, shares how, for example, his organic yogurt producing company went from a small business into the third largest brand of yogurt in the United States. Um, I mean, he explained the idea that when there is a demand for organic foods, then the big corporations take notice because they still want to make money, they still want to make profit. And for example, Walmart and Target recently started carrying organic selections in their stores and don't think for a second it was done because they think oh we want to make this world a better place we want people to eat better to be healthier um, that's not the reason the reason is all about profit but even so even if they do that for a profit you still have um, the selection of better healthier foods available to you so there is certainly a way to break that system that is created at the moment um, another interesting example, um, co-producer Eric Schlosser shared with us and uh, he said that, I don't know if you remember, but the tobacco industry used to be invisible too. I mean, uh, they pretty much used to have commercials and ads all on mainstream TV and print media saying that smoking was cool, it was good for you. Uh, until one day, there was a research that linked lung cancer directly to smoking and people got outraged and uh, there was a push for um, the laws to change to include a message on the pack of cigarettes saying that um, uh, by smoking there's an increased chance of getting lung cancer and that really um, was the, the moment the tobacco industry failed and they lost their battle. So um, there, that's another way that maybe the food industry right now uh, with all of its um, chemically induced, um, hormonally implanted, um, you know, genetically modified foods out there, uh, they can be still broken down if uh, there's enough research out there to link them to uh, the ongoing epidemic of obesity, uh, diabetes, uh, cancer, um, allergies, so forth, so on. Um, if there's such a link established, I bet that you know a lot of things will be changed in the future. And this is the most important thing that I want you to take away from this review. Every time you go to the supermarket and you purchase a food, you are voting in a way because this is how you demand this food to come back on the shelf again. Uh, if you don't buy a food, it's not going to be um, replaced on the shelves. It's going to go out of stock. It's going to be out of demand. But the more you buy something, the more demand you create. And just like you know, Stony Field CEO uh, said that Walmart and Target and all the other supermarkets will take a notice of what you're purchasing and what you're voting for. So choose your foods carefully and vote carefully the next time you go to the superstore. Thank you for watching my review and make sure to subscribe to my channel for more reviews in the future.